Hey there folks, Slam and Sammy Systems here talking to you about solving systems of equations using elimination. Now here's a question. How do baseball players keep cool? By sitting next to their fans, a boom! First thing we're gonna do is review a system of equations. That's a set of two or more equations. So here you can see we have four systems of equations. The first one has a equation in slope intercept form and a standard form equation. Here we have a standard form equation and a point slope form equation. Here we have a point slope and a standard form. And then the last one would be two slope intercept forms. You just need two or more equations to constitute a system of equations. Now, a solution to a system is an ordered pair x comma y that satisfies both equations in the system. So here we can check, is 2 comma 3 a solution to this system? So what we're going to do is we're going to take 2, plug it in for x, and 3, plug it in for y in both of these equations and see if it comes out equal on both sides. First, if we were to take 2 and plug it in for x and 3, plug it in for y in our first equation, we now simplify. What's 1 half times 2? That's going to give you 1. And then 1 plus 2 gives you 3. Does 3 equal 3? Yes, it does. Therefore, Therefore, 2 comma 3 is a solution to this first equation. But is it a solution to our second equation? Well, that's when we take 2 comma 3. We're going to plug in 2 for x and 3 for y in our second equation. And when we do, 2 plus 3 equals 5. Does 5 equal 5? Yes, it does. Therefore, this point, this x comma y, is a solution to this system of equations. Now let's talk about how to solve a system using elimination. So step one, we're going to put equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So standard form is ax plus by is equal to c. Then you have to look and make sure that one variable has opposite coefficients in each of the equations. So we're looking for one equation to have, let's say, x and the other one to have negative x. One equation to have 3y and the other equation to have negative 3y. Those would have opposite coefficients. Next, we would add the two equations together so one variable is eliminated. The whole point of getting one variable to have opposite coefficients is that when we do step two and add the two equations together, one of the variables is going to cancel each other out, the one that has opposite coefficients. Then only one variable is going to be left. So step three, you solve for the variable that remains. Then in step four, you're going to take whatever you found x to equal or y to equal in step three, and you're going to substitute it into either equation to find the second variable. So let's say in step three, we found x equals five. Then we're going to take that five, plug it in for x into either one of the equations in your system, and we can solve for y. Then once you find y, you can then write your solution as an ordered pair x comma y, and you're done. What sport has the most expensive fields? Baseball, because they play on diamonds. A bing, boom, boom. Example time. Now, example one says solve the system of equations using elimination. So we're going to use elimination. Step one, we want to put equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So first, are these equations in standard form? Ax plus by equals c. Ax plus by equals c. Yes. Ax plus by equals c. Yes. This doesn't have to be a plus, remember? Now that we have both equations in standard form, we need to ensure one variable has opposite coefficients. We have a 3x and we have an x. Okay, one's a 3 and one's a 1. Those are not opposite coefficients. What about the y? We have positive 3y and we have, oh, negative 3y. We have this 3 and negative 3. Therefore, those are opposite coefficients for our y. We're ready to go. Step two, add the two equations. So one variable is eliminated. So we're going to put these two equations on top of one another and add them together. Here's how this works. We're going to add down. What's 3x plus x? That's going to be 4x. What's 3y plus negative 3y? Oh, those are going to cancel each other out. And what's 27 plus negative 11? That's going to be 16. Now that we've done this, we've eliminated our y, so there's only an x left. So step three, we're going to solve for the variable that remains. How do I solve for x? Well, remember, I need to get my variable left done. Constants need to go to the right, so this 4 has to go over here. So I divide both sides by 4 to cancel that out, and I get x is equal to 4. Now that I have that, I can take what I found x is equal to, plug it into either one of these equations for x, and solve for y. So which one looks easier? Probably this one down here, right? So I'm going to take 4, plug it in for x, and now I can solve for y. How do I do that? Well, I get my variables to the left. Done. Constants need to go to the right. So I start with anything added or subtracted. So this 4 has to go over here. Since it's positive 4, I do the opposite, the inverse. I subtract 4 from both sides. These cancel each other out. And negative 11 minus 4 is the same as negative 11 plus negative 4, which is negative 15. I then get y by itself by dividing both sides by negative 3. These cancel each other out. And I get y is equal to 5. 
Now I have my X and my Y. So step five, I write it as an ordered pair. Four comma five is the solution to this system of equations. Remember, always, if you have time, plug in four for X here and here. Plug in five for Y here and here. Simplify each equation and make sure the number is the same on both sides of the equation. That tells you that you got the right answer. What do you get when you cross a baseball player with a Supreme Court justice? Babe Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Boom! You try. Okay, doing the same thing here. Step one, put equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So first, check. Are these in standard form? AX plus BY equals C. Yes, that is in standard form. What about this one? AX plus BY equals C. Yes, standard form. Remember, this doesn't have to be a plus. These are in standard form. So now we need to make sure one of the variables has opposite coefficients. So let's look at the X first. What's the coefficient for this X? That's negative one. What's the coefficient for this X? Positive one. Are those opposite? Yes, because those are opposite. Opposite, we can move to step two. We're going to add these two equations together so that one variable is eliminated. So we stack them on top of one another and add them together. Remember, you just add down. What's negative 1x plus x? Well, those cancel each other out. That's the whole reason we are able to add these together because these cancel out. Over here, 5y plus negative 1y is going to be positive 4y. And then 13 plus 15 gives you 28. So now we have just a y left. That means we can solve for y. So we're going to solve for the variable that remains. How do I get y by itself? We're going to divide both sides by 4. If I divide both sides by 4, these 4s cancel each other out. And over here, 28 divided by 4 gives you 7. We have found what y is equal to. Now we need to find what x is equal to. So we're going to take this 7 and plug it in for y in either one of these equations. Doesn't matter which one. Which one's easier? Probably this one right here. So we're going to take 7 and plug it in this equation for y. When I do, it looks something like this. Now I can solve for x. How do I get x by itself? I'm going to add 7 to both sides of the equation. That way I get x by itself and these cancel each other out. Over here, 15 plus 7 is going to give you 22. Now I have my x and my y. So step 5, I'm going to write my answer as an ordered pair. 22 comma 7 is going to be my solution to this system. Again, if you have time left over at the end of your test, make sure you plug these in to both of these equations and it comes out equal on both sides. Example two, doing the same thing. Step one, put equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So let's look, is this first equation in standard form? AX plus BY equals C. Yes, that's in standard form. What about this one? AX plus BY equals C where A is one. Yes, that's in standard form. Next, I need to make sure that one variable has opposite coefficients. So what about the X's? Do they have opposite coefficients? Well, this has a coefficient of two. This has a coefficient of one. Those are not opposites. Remember opposites are two and negative two, one and negative one. So those are not opposites. What about y? We have three and five. Those aren't opposites either. Anytime you get two equations and they don't have opposite coefficients for either one of the variables, what you're going to do is you're going to make it so that one of the variables has opposite coefficients. Here's how you do this. We're going to choose x. X is going to be the variable that we are choosing to have opposite coefficients. So here it's 2x. This is 1x. What would I have to multiply this by to have an opposite coefficient of this one over here? Negative 2. So what I do is I'm going to multiply this by negative 2. But I can't just multiply x by negative 2. I have to multiply everything in this equation by negative 2. When I do that, I distribute this negative 2 here and here. And then over here, negative 2 times 8 is going to be negative 16. Now I have two equations that are both in standard form. And you can see that the x now has opposite coefficients. So I'm ready to move on to step two. Let's add these two equations together so one variable is eliminated. So I stack these two equations on top of one another. I'm going to add them together. I add down. Now again, when I add 2x and negative 2x, those cancel each other out. That's the whole reason why we did this. Here, 3y plus negative 10y is going to be negative 7y. And then 9 plus negative 16 is going to be negative 7. Now I have an equation with just one variable that I can solve for that specific variable. So let's solve for y. How do I get y by itself? I have to divide both sides by negative 7. When I do, these cancel each other out. And over here, negative 7 divided by negative 7 gives me 1. We have found what y is equal to. How do I figure out what x is equal to? I'm going to take 1 and plug it back in for y in either one of these equations. Which one's easier? How about the second one? Sure. I'm going to plug in 1 for y here. And when I do, I get x plus 5 times 1 is equal to 8 plus 5 times 1. That's 5. And to get x by itself, I just subtract 5 from both sides. That way, these cancel each other out. And I get 8 minus 5 is going to equal 3. Now I have my x and my y. So I'm going to write my answer, step 5, as an ordered pair. So the solution to my system of equations is 3 comma 1. Again, plug this in to both of these equations. 3 goes in for x, 1 goes in for y. Make sure you get the same thing on both sides of the equation. Same thing here. Plug in 3 for x, 1 for y. Make sure you get the same thing on both sides of the equation.
Which cartoon character is the best at baseball? Homer Simpson. <laughs> you try. Okay, doing the same thing. First, put equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. Is this in standard form? AX plus BY equals C. Yes, that's in standard form. What about this? AX plus BY equals C. Yes, standard form. Next, does one of the variables have opposite coefficients? So we look at X. We have a negative three here and a two here. Those are not opposite numbers. What about Y? We have a four and a one. No, those aren't opposite either. So we need to make it so one of these has opposite coefficients. Mm, which one would be easier, the X or the Y? It's actually gonna be the Y. The reason is because all I have to do then is multiply this equation by negative four. If I multiply this equation by negative four, what happens is I distribute that negative four here and here. And then on this side, multiply negative four times negative eight, I end up getting this. Now, all I had to do was multiply one of the equations by a number, and now I have opposite coefficients for my Y. If I chose X, just thinking back, I would have had to multiply this one by two and this one by three. You would have had to do it for both equations. Then that would have given you negative six X and positive six X. So it's always easier if you just have to multiply one equation by a number rather than both of them. Now that I have my two equations in standard form with opposite coefficients for my y, I'm ready to move to step two. And in step two, I'm going to stack each of these equations on top of one another and add them together. When I add these two together, the negative 3x plus the negative 8x gives you negative 11x and the 4y plus the negative 4y are going to cancel each other out. That's the whole reason we did this. Now 12 plus 32 is going to give you 44 and I have negative 11x is equal to 44. So I have an equation with one variable that I can now solve for that specific variable. So we take negative 11x equals 44. We divide both sides by negative 11 to get x by itself. These cancel each other out and we get x is equal to negative 4. Now that I've found x, I can find y by taking this negative 4 and plugging it into either one of these equations for x and solving for y. Which one's easier? Probably this one right here. So we're going to take negative 4, plug it in for x, and now we simplify. What's 2 times negative 4? That's negative 8. And how do I get y by itself? I need to get rid of this negative 8. So I do the opposite, the inverse. I add 8 to both sides. That way these cancel each other out. And over here, negative 8 plus 8. Oh, those also cancel each other out. And we just get y is equal to 0. So now I have my x and my y. So I'm going to write my answer as an ordered pair in step 5. And it's going to be negative 4 comma 0 as my solution to this system. Again, if you have time, please check your answer. Plug in negative 4 for x, 0 for y. See if you get the same thing on both sides. Here, plug in negative 4 for x, 0 for y. See if you get the same thing on both sides. If you do, that means you got the right answer. Now, example three, doing the same thing. Step one, put equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So are these in standard form? AX plus BY equals C. Yes, standard form. AX plus BY equals C. Yes, standard form. Next, does one of the variables have opposite coefficients? So X, here we have a three and a two. Those are not opposite numbers. What about Y? We have a five and a four. No, those aren't opposite numbers either. So which one should I pick to have opposite coefficients? Because we need to make them have opposite coefficients now. It's usually better to work with the smaller numbers like three and two versus five and four so we're going to find the least common multiple between three and two and that's going to be six so we need one of these to be positive six one of these to be negative six so i'm going to take this one right here and i'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative two that way when i distribute this negative two here and here i end up getting negative six x minus ten y and then over here equals positive six on this side i need to multiply both sides of the equation by three once i do that i can then distribute this three to the two x and and the 4y and I get 6x plus 12y and over here we get negative 12. Now the whole reason we did this is now our x's have opposite coefficients negative 6 and 6. Perfect. So we can move to step 2. We're going to stack those equations on top of one another these two guys and then we're going to add them together. The reason we're going to add them together is because now these x's have opposite coefficients so when we add them the x's are going to cancel each other out. Here, negative 10y plus 12y is going to give me 2y, and then 6 plus negative 12 gives you negative 6. Now I have an equation with just one variable, so I can solve for that variable. Let's do that. If I want to solve this for y, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That way these cancel each other out. I just get y is equal to, and then over here, negative 6 divided by 2 gives you negative 3. Now I have my y. How do I get my x? Well, I'm going to take what I found y equal to, negative 3, and plug it in for y into either 
either one of these equations and solve for x. Doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to take it, plug it in the easier one, which I don't know, I guess this one. If I take negative 3, plug that in for y here, I can now simplify this and solve for x. So what's 4 times negative 3? That's negative 12. And then how do I get x by itself? How do I solve for x? Well, I start with anything added or subtracted to this x and move that to the other side. So this minus 12, I need to move over here. So I do the opposite, the inverse. I add 12 to both sides of the equation. That way these cancel each other out and I get 2x is equal to negative 4 plus 12 gives you 8. How do I get x by itself? Well, again, to get rid of this 2, I divide both sides by 2. I got to do the opposite, the inverse. That way these cancel each other out and 8 divided by 2 is going to give you 4. Now I've found what x is equal to and what y is equal to. So I'm going to write my answer as an ordered pair, x comma y. So it's going to be 4 comma negative 3 as the solution to this system of equations. Now, you can tell that it's the solution because if you were to check your answer, you could plug in 4 for x, negative 3 for y, simplify, and you should get the same thing on both sides of the equation. Same thing down here. Plug in 4 for x, negative 3 for y, simplify, you should get the same thing on both sides of the equation. What type of baseball do they play in England? You think it's cricket, but it's t-ball. <laughs> Boom! You try. Okay, step one, put equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So first, are these in standard form? AX plus BY equals C. Yes, standard form. AX plus BY equals C. Yes, standard form. Next, does one variable have opposite coefficients? So let's check the X's first. The X's, we have a four and a six. Those are not opposite numbers. What about the five and the negative four? No, those aren't opposite numbers either. Well, we need to make one of these variables have opposite coefficients. You can pick the X's or the Y's. Doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm gonna choose the Y's because one is already positive, one is already negative. So all I have to do is make it so that they are the same number. How do I do that? Well, what is the least common multiple between 5 and 4? It's going to be 20. And how do I get 5 to be 20? What do I multiply 5 by to get it to be 20? 4. So I'm going to multiply everything in this equation over here by 4. And when I do that, I distribute and I get 16x plus 20y is equal to 60. On this side, how do I get this 4 to be 20? I multiply it by 5. So I'm going to multiply everything in this equation by 5. Distribute this 5. 5 times 6x is going to give you 30x. And then 5 times negative 4y gives you negative 20y. 5 times 11 gives you 55. Now, the reason I did that is because look at the y's now. These two y's have opposite coefficients. We have a positive 20 and a negative 20. Because of that, we can move to step two. We're going to stack these two equations on top of one another. Then we're going to add them together. The reason is because when we add these two together, the 16x plus 30x is just going to give you 46x. But the 20y plus the negative 20y cancel each other out. So we only have one variable, an x. On this side, 60 plus 55 gives you 115. Since we have an equation with just one variable, we can solve for that variable. How do I solve this for x? I'm going to divide both sides by 46. When I do, these are going to cancel each other out. And over here, 115 divided by 46 gives you 2.5 or 2.5. Now that I found x, I can take this number and plug it into either one of these equations for x and solve for y. Doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to plug it into the first one. If I take 2.5, plug it in for x, I can then simplify this. 4 times 2.5 gives me 10. Now, how do I solve this for y? Well, remember, we simplify, move, solve. I need to simplify both sides. Already done. Next, move my variable left. Done. Constants need to go to the right. So we start with anything added or subtracted to our variable. So this 10 has to go. To get this to the other side, since it's positive 10, I subtract 10 from both sides. That way, these cancel each other out, and I get 5y is equal to 5. Now, to get rid of this 5, right, because all the constants have to go to the right side, I need to do the opposite, the inverse. Since it's 5 times y, I divide both sides by 5. That way, these cancel each other out, and I get y is equal to 1. Now, I found x and y, so I write my answer as an ordered pair, 2.5 comma 1. Again, this is your answer, and you can always check your answer. Take this, plug in 2.5 for x, 1 for y. Simplify and make sure you get 15. Here, plug in 2.5 for x, 1 for y. Simplify and make sure you get 11. Okay, now let's do some special cases. Let's start with A. So again, we're just going to do the same thing that we've been doing. Step one, put the equations in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So are these in standard form? AX plus BY equals C. Yes. AX plus BY equals C. Yes. Both of these are in standard form. Next, does one variable have opposite coefficients? So let's check the X's first. X has a three and a six. No, those are not opposite numbers. What about Y? Y has a four and an eight. No, those are not opposite numbers. So which one should I pick to have opposite coefficients? Because we need to make them have opposite coefficients now. Doesn't matter which one. I choose X. Sure. So how do I get these coefficients to be opposite numbers? I figure out what the least common multiple is. What's the least common multiple between three and six? That's six. So I'm going to multiply this one by two. 
but I want them to be opposite coefficients. So I'm going to multiply this by negative 2 on both sides. Because remember, whatever I do to one side of an equation, I have to do the other. So here, when I distribute this negative 2 here and here, I get negative 6x minus 8y is equal to negative 48. Now, the x's have opposite coefficients, 6 and negative 6. So I'm ready to move to step 2, where I'm going to stack these two equations on top of one another, add them together, and the x's should cancel out. That's why we did it. What happens with the y's? Oh, the y's also cancel out that's weird what happens over here well what's negative 48 plus 24 that's gonna be negative 24 and when everything cancels out over here it's just zero there's nothing left so does zero equal negative 24 these do not equal each other so your answer is no solution when everything cancels out when the X's and the Y's cancel out and you're left with zero equals some number that's not zero your answer should be no solution Let's check over here. Same thing. Step one, put the equation in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So standard form, ax plus by equals c. Yes. ax plus by equals c. Yes. So they're both in standard form. Now, does one variable have opposite coefficients? Our x has a negative one and a six. No, those are not opposite numbers. Our y has a five and a negative 30. No, those are not opposite numbers. So I need to pick one of these variables to have opposite numbers. Let's do the x. How do I get the x to have opposite coefficients? So this one, since it's negative one, I'm going to multiply it by six. If I multiply multiply both sides of this equation by 6 and distribute this 6 over here, I get negative 6x plus 30y is equal to 18. Now I have an equation with a coefficient for my x that is opposite of the coefficient that's over here. So we have a variable with opposite coefficients and two equations in standard form. Done with step one. We're ready to move to step two, which is to add these two equations together. So we're going to stack them on top of one another and add them together. The reason we do that is because now the negative 6x and the 6x are going to cancel each other out. Here, we can now add the y's. What's 30y plus negative 30y? Oh, those cancel each other out. So we just get over here on this side of the equation, zero. What about over here? 18 plus negative 18? Oh, those also cancel each other out. So we get zero is equal to zero. Now again, we look. Since there's no variables left, we just have to decide, is this true? Does zero equal zero yes so instead of being no solution since zero does equal zero our answer is infinitely many solutions why can't zebras play baseball because three stripes and you're out <laughs> you try Okay, doing the same thing here. First, put the equation in standard form with one variable having opposite coefficients. So are these both in standard form? Yes, they are. Next, we need to make sure one of the variables has opposite coefficients. So does the x have opposite coefficients, four and negative eight? No. What about the y's? We have negative seven and 14? No. So we need to make one of the variables have opposite coefficients. Let's do the x, why not? So what's the least common multiple between eight and four? It's eight. So I just have to multiply this one by two. Since this one's already negative, if I multiply both sides of this equation by two, what happens is I get eight X minus 14 Y is equal to 30. And the eight and the negative eight are opposite coefficients. So we're ready to go. Now we stack those on top of one another and add them together. The eight X and the negative eight X are gonna cancel each other out. That's why we did it. What about the Y's? We have negative 14 Y plus 14 Y. Oh, those also cancel each other out. And then we have 30 plus negative 30. Oh, those also cancel each other out. So we end up getting zero is equal to zero. Is that true? Yes, it is. Therefore, your answer is infinitely many solutions. For part B, doing the same thing. Step one, put equations in standard form, which they already are. Next, we need to make sure one variable has opposite coefficients. Our x has a 4 and a negative 5. Those are not opposite numbers. What about our y? We have a negative 8 and a 10. Those are not opposite numbers. We need to then pick one variable to have opposite coefficients. We'll make the x have opposite coefficients. Why not? So what's the least common multiple between 4 and 5? That's going to be 20. How do I get 4x to be 20x? I need to multiply it by 5. Whatever I do to one side of an equation, I have to do the other side. So I multiply everything in this equation by 5. Over here, how do I get negative 5x to be negative 20x? I multiply it by 4. Whatever I do to one side of an equation, I have to do the other side. So I multiply everything in this equation by 4. When I do, I get this. Now I have two equations in standard form with opposite coefficients for our x. Step two, I can then take these two equations and stack them on top of one another and add them together. When I do 20x plus negative 20x, that cancels each other out. That's why we did it. What about the y's? We have negative 40y plus 40y. Oh, those also cancel each other out. So all that's left on this side of the equal sign is a zero. What about on this side? 75 plus negative 120 is going to be negative 45. Since there's no variables left, you just look at your equation that's left. Does zero equal negative 45? The answer is no. Therefore, your answer is no solution.
Now, word problem says a toy store worker packed up two boxes of identical dolls and plush toys for shipping in boxes that weigh one ounce when empty. One box held three dolls and four plush toys. The worker marked the weight as 12 ounces. The other box held two dolls and three plush toys. The worker marked the weight as 10 ounces. Explain why the worker must have made a mistake. So step one, we're not scared. This is a word problem, we can do this. Step two, we need to identify what is the question asking us to do. It's asking us to figure out why the worker must have made a mistake. Well, that's basically asking us to figure out what do the dolls and the plush toys weigh? That's what we're trying to figure out. So we're gonna define our variables. D is gonna be the weight of a doll. P is gonna be the weight of a plush toy. Now we can write our equations. So what does this question give us? It tells us that the box when empty is one ounce. It also says that one box held three dolls and four plush toys and weighed 12 ounces. So if I were to write the equation for the weight of this would be three times the weight of a doll, D, plus four times the weight of a plush toy, P, plus one ounce for the box has to equal 12 ounces. Next, for the other box, we had two dolls, so two times the weight of a doll, D, plus three times the weight of a plush toy, P, plus one ounce, equaled 10 ounces. Now I have my system of equations, so I'm ready to solve for the weight of my doll and my plush toy. So we're gonna use elimination to do this. First, we need to make sure that each equation is in standard form and has one variable with opposite coefficients. So is this in standard form? AX plus BY equals C. No, this plus one has to go. How do I get that to the other side? Since it's plus one, I do the opposite, the inverse. I subtract one from both sides. That way those cancel out. Now I'm in standard form. What about this guy? Again, with the plus one, it's gotta go. So I subtract one from both sides. These cancel out and I get my equation in standard form. Now, does one variable have opposite coefficients? My D has a three and a two. Those are not opposites. My P has a four and a three. Those are not opposites. Since neither my D nor my P have opposite coefficients, I need to make one of them have opposite coefficients. Doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm gonna pick the D. So to get my D to have opposite coefficients, here it's a three, here it's a two. What's the least common multiple between three and two? That's six. So I want one of them to be positive six and one to be negative six. So I'm gonna make this one the negative one. What do I multiply three by to get it to be negative six? Negative two. And remember, whatever I multiply to one side of the equation, gotta multiply to the other side of the equation. So I distribute this negative two here. I want this to be positive six. So what do I multiply two by to get it to be positive six? That's three. So I multiply both sides of the equation by three. And now I have my standard form equations where my D coefficients are opposite. Perfect. So I can move to step two, which is to stack those two equations on top of one another and add them together. Now, when I add them together, the negative 6D and the 6D cancel each other out. That's why we did it. Over here, if I add the negative 8P and the 9P together, that gives you 1P. And then negative 22 plus 27 gives you 5. So I have 1P is equal to 5 or P equals 5. So the next step would be to solve for P, but I already did. I got P equals 5. Sweet. So now all I have to do is take this 5, plug it in for P into either equation here or here and solve for D. Or if I want to simplify that, either equation here or here and solve for P. Or or you could do it down here as well. You get the same answer. So I'm gonna take P and plug it into this equation right here. If I take five, plug it in for P in this equation, I can then simplify and solve for D. What's three times five? That's 15. Now I wanna solve for D, so I need to move my variable left, done. Constants need to go to the right, so I'm gonna subtract this 15 from both sides. That way these cancel out. I get two D is equal to negative six. And now how do I get D all by itself? Well, to get rid of this two, I divide both sides by two. That way these cancel each other out and I get D is equal to negative three. So I have my P and my D, so I'm ready to write my answer. I'm not gonna write it as an ordered pair because I have a P and a D. In the word problem, you need to answer in a sentence. Now, when we answer in a sentence, we need to make sure that we are answering the question. What was the question? Well, it's asking us to explain why the worker must have made a mistake. Well, what did we find? We found that the plush toy weighs five ounces and that the doll weighs negative three ounces. That doesn't make any sense. You can't weigh negative three ounces. Therefore, that's the mistake. This doesn't make sense because the solution implies a doll weighs negative three ounces and you're done. 